Hey guys, I'm Avesh. This is the 15th video of .NET MA UI with Sync Fusion Control series. Let's quickly review our previous session before we get started. In the previous session, we focused on understanding the Sync Fusion scheduler control and we have created and added events to the scheduler control. We have also learned about multiple scheduler views, created recurring events and defined the recurring events with recurring rules. We have also added background colors to the events to distinguish the availability. In this session, we will focus on creating resource view which typically provides a visual representation of available resources, often in the form of a calendar or a timeline view. This allows users to see resource availability at a glance. Resource view schedulers are used in a wide range of industries including healthcare for scheduling appointments and patient care, manufacturing for machine and workforce scheduling, hospitality for booking rooms and facilities, and project management for allocating team members and equipment to projects. Appointment reminders is another good feature of Sync Fusion Scheduler Control. We will explore creating appointments in Scheduler Control. We'll also explore the drag and drop features and we'll understand the customizations that can be applied with the Scheduler Control. Scheduler provides different calendar types such as Gregorian, Hijri, Korean, Taiwan, Thai, Persian, Julian, Japanese and etc. We will explore these calendar types in a moment. Let's now switch to the coding session and get going. Before working on the resource view, let's explore another great feature of scheduler which is month agenda view. Let me switch back to the code and change the view from week to month. Let me switch back to the device emulator. Notice that we see the events in month view. However, the text which is displayed is very clumsy. We cannot even read the text. So there's no point in showing the events in month view on a smaller devices. It makes sense to show them as month view in the larger screens which are the desktop or the notebooks. Now in order to address this problem in the month agenda view, scheduler allows us to display events as text or as an indicator. And then once we display the events as an indicator, we can choose a particular date and display the events below the scheduler. In order to achieve that, we need to bind those events to another list view. This is a very good example of combining the scheduler as well as list view which is quite possible in real-time applications. Let me show you how we can achieve that. Let me switch to the code and change this text view as indicator view. Under the scheduler, let's add a code scheduler colon sfscheduler dot month view and within the month view let me add scheduler month view with few properties such as appointment display mode as indicator and let, let me add another property to display only two visible weeks number of visible weeks equal to two let me close this application let me close the tag and change the height request to 400 here let me switch back look at that the appointments are displayed as an indicator now on selecting a particular date we need to bind the appointments to another control below the scheduler which is the list view so let me add a list view here quickly let me switch back to the code and add the list view under the scheduler control. Let's create a list view over here. List view, x name, appointment, list view. Let me add grid dot column one and give a row height of 44 selection mode. I will disable the selection mode for this list view. And let's create a item template for the list view. Within the item template, let's create a data template. Let me create a view cell to make it faster. Let me copy the code from my other window. We have already learned about the list view. We, have, we are just creating a data template with view cell and we are binding the from date to date and the event text which is nothing but our event name over here. Let me save this. In order to display the selected events in the list view, we have to create a selection change event for every date selection. So let me switch back to the code over here and choose selection changed event and create a new event handler. Let me switch to the code behind. A new event handler is created in the code behind. Now let's take the sender and cast it back to the scheduler. How do we do that? Sync fusion dot MAUI dot scheduler dot SF scheduler. Let me call it as SF scheduler equal to. Let me take the same code, use it, and typecast the sender. Now the SF scheduler will have. Now the SF scheduler will hold the selection date, which is the selected date. I will say selected date equal to SF scheduler dot selected date. In the previous session, we have binded the events from get schedule info from the schedule repository. We will use the same thing to bind the events 
to the item source let me copy that code and say this dot appointment view dot item source equal to repo dot get schedule infos now for time being i'm not filtering the events from the get schedule infos i'm just taking the events from the get schedule infos and binding it to the item source i will leave it to you guys to filter the events from the get schedule info using the selected date which is available from the sf scheduler let me save this and restart the application let me select a date notice that on selection changed the selection changed event is triggered and the events are binded to the list views item source let's now focus on resource view we'll be using the existing employee info object and map it to the scheduler resources to display the timeline view with resources which are our employees let me switch back to the employee info here and create a constructor. Let me copy and paste the code from my other window. Let me create few properties which are background, foreground, ID for the employee and the URL. Once we are done with this, let's save this employee info and switch to the schedule layout view model over here. I have created an observable collection of resources which are nothing but our employee info. Let's enhance the get schedule info to accept the input parameter which is our employees now let's switch back to the schedule layout view model and we'll pass the employees to the get schedule info from the generate source event let's say model dot employee repository emp repo equal to new employee repository now we'll pass employee repository dot get employee list which is nothing but our resources and we'll send this resources list to the get schedule info as the input parameter we'll also switch to the employee repository and add another property called url here which is nothing but our employee image url path which we have done in our previous session we will bind this url to the resource mapping in the scheduler let's now switch to the schedule info and add resources as observable collection so let me switch here create a property and instead of schedule info over here let me create this property as an object of observable collection and call it as resources let me switch back to the repository and let me jump into get schedule info method and add events that we have created in our previous session to all of these employees how do we do that we will create a for loop and for each employee we will add the resource over here so let's say for employee count info.resources.add employee.id let's now switch back to the xaml file and bind the resources under the sf scheduler let me create scheduler sf scheduler dot resource view and let's bind the resources which we have created scheduler resource view resources equal to binding resources now once this is done we need to create the header template and data template to bind the resources their images and the resource name for all of the scheduler events let me now create header template under the resources view scheduler resource view dot header template to save some time let me copy the header template from my other window and explain you we have created a stack layout over here and binding the image with the url of the resource that we have created earlier and we are binding the employee name and also the id to display as a resource view once this is done we need to create a mapping to map the employee id and name to the resources how do we do that scheduler colon resource view dot mapping and let's say resource mapping name equal to name let's also bind the other properties which are background foreground and id which are key for resource mapping similar to the month view let me add a timeline view with a start hour from 8 till evening 8 pm so let me do that scheduler as of scheduler dot timeline view let me close this open scheduler dot scheduler timeline view and let's add end hour equal to 20 and start hour is from 8 am close this now the other thing we need to take care of is in the scheduler we need to map the resource ids how do we do that we have binded the resource ids in the repository with info.resources.add with the employee id so i'll switch back and say resources id sorry about that we need to do that in the mapping so under the scheduler appointment mapping we need to say resource id is equal to 
resources which we have already created. Let's start the application and notice the output. Notice that we are in the month view option and hence the appointments are listed under the schedulers within the list view. Let me switch this to timeline month to show the resources. Notice that the scheduler is displaying the events under each of the employees with the employee name and the employee ID with the image that we have binded earlier. Let me increase the height of the scheduler to display rest of the employees as well. Let me change it to 600 and notice that we now have the employee view very clear. Let me restart this application again. Let's now focus on reminders. Adding reminders to scheduler is pretty simple. Let me switch back to the code and stop the application. Let me now switch to schedule info and create another class called reminders. So let me add a public class reminder and within the reminder class, let me add a time span to indicate when is a reminder need to be started. And then let's also add another Boolean property to dismiss the reminders. Let's switch back to the schedule layout view model and we'll create an observable collection for the reminders to bind the reminders to the scheduler control. Let me create observable collection reminders. Now once we have created the reminders, we need to enhance our get schedule info to bind the reminders over here. How do we do that? We'll switch to the schedule info over here and create an observable collection called reminders. Reminders, that's it. Let's switch back and start adding the reminders to the info object. I would say info dot reminders equal to new observable collection and I would say info dot reminders dot add. Let me add a reminder for the event that is going to occur today. So I would say new reminder and I'll add a time span as one hour. So the options what we have got for time span are hours, minutes and seconds. I would say that before an event is started, we will have the reminder starting an hour before. So let me close this. Let's add a new event today to trigger the reminder. So let me add an event which is occurring today within an hour and let me add a new event. Let me copy and paste the code that I have already written. I'm adding a new event and calling the event name as reminder test which is occurring from now within an hour and ends in an hour. So we have a new event occurring to denote the reminder and we are binding the reminder over here with a new time span. That means if an event is occurring within an hour, a reminder will pop up to say that, hey, you know what, a test event is occurring and this is the reminder for that test event. Let me now switch back to the XAML and enhance the code to observe the reminders. How do we do that? We will say enable reminder equal to true and we'll bind a reminder event which is reminder alert opening and we'll create a new event handler. Let me switch back to the code to the CS file and create an alert to display the reminder. So I would say bool snooze equal to display alert of the reminder, which is our appointment reminder test with snooze and dismiss options. Now we have an await. So let's create an async for this method and switch back to the XAML. We have enabled the reminder. We have alerted the reminder, but we need to map the reminder in the reminder mapping. So let's switch to the appointment mapping and create a reminder mapping under the appointment mapping. Let me call it as reminder mapping and map the properties that we have created for the reminder under this. So we will map time before start and is dismissed. Let's save this application and start the application on the virtual device. Notice that the reminder has not triggered. We have missed one binding over here. Let me switch to the appointment mapping and say reminders equal to reminders and let me restart the application again. Notice that we now have the reminder popped up. Let me click on dismiss to dismiss the reminder. With this, we have successfully implemented the reminder property or the reminder binding with the scheduler. Drag and drop is another great feature of scheduler control. It's pretty simple to enable drag and drop. Let's see how we can achieve that. Under the scheduler, let's add scheduler.sfscheduler.dragdrop settings. And we can further customize the drag and drop settings over here. Let's say scheduler drag drop settings and we'll say allow navigation is true. We can add few more properties. Allow scroll is true. And let me also add show time indicator, which is true. Now we can further 
customize the time indicator to show the time indicator style as green, red or any other color. So we will say time indicator style equal to scheduler colon scheduler text style and let's say text color we will use green. At the scheduler level we will say hello appointment drag is true. That's all. Let's start the application and look at the output. Let me switch to the week view over here and try to drag and drop an appointment. Notice that we have the time indicator on the left side which is showing 11.22 in green color. Scheduler control supports different calendar types. Let me add a calendar type over here as Hijri and notice that the calendar is quickly changed into Hijri. Based on the localization you can choose different calendar types. Let me say let me use Japanese as well and see how it changes the output. Notice that the scheduler view has changed to the Japanese output. It is pretty simple. With this we have successfully understood all the features of scheduler control. In the next session we will focus on another sync fusion MAUI control. Till then thank you for listening and have a great day.